Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B., the Ganji, doing political commentary for the media speaks here at the correct views. Also, a uh, writer for Blasting News and the Conservative Daily Post. Thanking everybody for showing up, coming up, sharing up. Let everybody know that I'm not here. Let everybody know that we have a show going on and that we have a lot of information that they're going to want to learn. Hello, those of you live, higher deaf up there, listener supported, that means, uh, finding me as I try to find my mouse at the correct views at uh, hotmail.com. Any money you give to me through PayPal goes towards one thing and one thing only, a better show. Uh, friends, this is Daily Mail. Um, a couple of stories about vaccines, and I want to get into them just a little bit to, to clarify where I think prudence meets stupidity. I think it's very prudent to weigh the options. Let's say that we know that we can find an autism link between vaccines on certain people when a certain number are given at one time at a certain age. We know there's a link to autism. That doesn't mean that every single vaccine that comes into the market is necessarily a bad idea. You also have to weigh the options. Autism is a terrible disease. Polio is a worse one. Now, you can go too far the other direction. You can sign yourself up for a flu vaccine every year, which is stupid. Um, if, you're, if you're prone to die if you get the flu, if you, for some reason, the flu is particularly going to kill you, I don't mean make you feel like you're dead. I don't mean make you throw up for two days. I mean it may kill you, then you may want to get a flu shot. <clears throat> In my humble opinion, and also uh, an opinion which is based on facts, the flu vaccine has a bit of thermosol in it. M mercury. Mercury is cumulative. Now listen to me before you just zone out. It's cumulative. That means that every time you take some of it into you, it does not ever leave the body. It stays there forever. All right. Look up what trace amounts of mercury poisoning can do to the body over time. Again, when your body doesn't expel it. So, no, I don't think it's a good idea to go and put mercury in your body. I think it's a better idea to up your vitamin C to 3,000 milligrams a day. Take echinacea. And if you do end up in cinnamon, and if you do end up unlucky enough to get the flu, buy something called umka. And again, I'm not endorsing umka. Umka does not pay me, nor does any place that sells it. All I'm saying is when you get the flu, it works better than anything I've ever found. It's called umka, U-M-C-H-K-A, I think. I don't even know how to spell it for sure. I just know that it works. Um, vaccines, we know, are dangerous. And there are ways to make them safer. You mean to tell me that we can't preserve a vaccine in any way that doesn't involve mercury? Really? You mean to tell me that there is no connection between mercury and vaccines, I should say, and autism? No, I'm not going to believe that either. If um, somebody wants to give you an anthrax vaccine, no. Is there an, is there an anthrax outbreak? <clears throat> Are you going to be sent to some hell hole in the Middle East to go fight? Then maybe an anthrax shot might be prudent for you. Things need to be weighed. Okay, You probably don't need to give a barrage of shots to a newborn child uh, and then wonder why they develop symptoms that are, in some instances, mild and in some instances, absolutely life-altering. So, I mean, you have to keep that in mind. And with those thoughts in the forefront, we're going to go into this Daily Mail. 
Trump puts RFK Jr., who was railed against a vaccine holocaust, in charge of a new commission on vaccine safety. <clears throat> now, see, this is a good idea. A really bad idea involves saying all vaccines are bad all of the time, so we must never vaccinate against anything. And that there is probably not a great idea, but over-vaccination, vaccine with agents in it that we know are dangerous is something else entirely and uh, we're going to look at my computer is running slow maybe it's because of all the droves coming in to do the show all one time but uh the vaccine skeptic is the most promising he's a democrat but trump hates and he never the most prominent democrat to accept an assignment from president-elect trump um Robert, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. revealed his new role after a meeting at Trump Tower on Tuesday. Now, again, I'm not panicking that we have a Kennedy back in office. For those of you that don't know, I think JFK was an okay man, but the rest of his family has been questionable, to say the least. He said uh, that Trump had asked him to lead a commission on vaccine safety and scientific integrity, and that he has agreed to do so. This is excellent news. Both Trump and Kennedy... Again, if you guys don't know this, uh, many people believe that there is a likelihood that Trump's youngest has something within the autism spectrum disorder. I'm not going to guess. You know what? If, if the poor guy does, it doesn't affect me any. And if he doesn't, then it doesn't mean that Trump is any less sincere about this. So I don't know that it really affects us. But it, it, the kid looked a little overwhelmed even for being the first son i guess is what it would be i understand but he seemed a bit overwhelmed even for that so i mean i don't know I, i'm rooting for the little guy i think he's probably socially maladjusted in some ways but i i'm sure with a father like trump it'll pass uh both trump and kennedy have raised suspicions about vaccines despite their overwhelming support among scientists and physicians as a way to prevent the spread of deadly disease that can infect infants and other children when the pool of protected people is diminished. Now, listen, there are two things here that you need to take away. First of all, if you're preventing deadly, if you're preventing one disease while causing another disease, then are you helping? If you are injecting somebody with mercury that will later develop into a cancer because you prevented the flu, are you doing a, a favor? Remember, what is the first rule of medicine in the United States? Do no harm. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't say help and then do harm. So that is a... That, that's a diminished outlook, to use their word. Second of all, spread of deadly diseases can infect infants and other children when the pool of protected is diminished. Now, wait a minute. If the flu vaccine works so wonderful, then how does me not getting the flu vaccine increase the likelihood that you will? If you took the vaccine, it's supposed to work. Right? Think about it. He's he, he didn't get his mumps mumps uh, shot. Okay, then he's gonna get mumps, not you. So if the vaccine works so damn well, then why is it that those who are vaccinated against it are worried that those who won't are going to give them something? Cut them right there. In at least a questionable statement recording. Uh, it, they, it's like a revolving door. They don't want you to look at the center and go around the issue. But when you watch the correct views, that's not what we do here, is it? Kennedy said the purpose would be to make sure we have scientific integrity in the vaccine process for efficiency and safety effects. The vaccine skeptic, and again, is a prominent Democrat. They love to mention that. Um, so there you go. This is good. President-elect Trump has some doubts about the current vaccine policies, and he has questions about it. So Trump is being 
questioned here for wanting to make something better. And he hasn't come in and said, no, we're going to take vaccines away and we're going to bring back, we're going to make polio great again. That isn't what he said. He said, we're going to make them safer because there are things that are clearly wrong with them now, if I'm going to paraphrase. They do a lot of good. They also do some harm. So why don't we go ahead and move in to take the harm away from the good? It says his opinion doesn't matter, but the science does matter, and we ought to be reading the science, and we ought to be debating the science, Kennedy said. Everybody ought to be able to be assured that the vaccines that we have, he's very pro-vaccine, meaning Trump, as am I, but they're as safe as they can possibly be. He said that last year vaccines were calling a, causing a holocaust among children, and he later apologized for looting, losing the loaded term. You know what? People need to quit associating every single word in the English language with the name Adolf Hitler. Holocaust means a vast number of a certain kind of people, a certain demographic of people being wiped out by something, be it on accident or on purpose or a combination of both. Vaccines would be a combination of both. Doctors, in almost every instance, give vaccines to help. Pharmaceutical companies are making them to help, but also hiding the dangers in order to facilitate a profit, to make money. So they're partially doing it on purpose. Either way, if a certain number of people are wiped out this way, that it is a holocaust, and the numbers of children who have been paralyzed and have their whole lives messed up and have uh, what will basically amount to terminal narcolepsy, the inability to ever sleep, there is enough of them to warrant the word holocaust. Now, does that mean that it happens to everyone who gets a vaccine? No, it, it, it help, it, it's very rare. But it's a massive what it happens. I mean, the, mark, the narcolepsy is rare. Some of the, the more autism-related, uh, not so rare. The appointment carries vaccine skeptics on the left and right, notwithstanding, it marries that, excuse me, the widespread scientific consensus of the benefit of vaccine use on the population. Trump said in 2014 in a tweet, healthy, a healthy young child goes to the doctor, gets pumped with a massive shot of many vaccines, doesn't feel good and changes. Autism many such cases okay good why would people be up in arms about this let's look into it let's get some people that have seen both sides of it let's get some people that don't want to get rid of all vaccines let's not go backwards in science let's go forward shall we um good okay i'm sorry this is nothing but good i'd like your opinion on this and uh, for anyone who would be under the misconception that this is my opinion it's not I've got one more story before I move on. So for those of you that have found this in the traditional way, just skip ahead if you're tired of vaccines. But I wouldn't, because you're going to want to hear this. Adon Salazar, mysterious body of, mysterious death, a body of doctor who linked vaccines to autism floating in the river. Isn't it amazing how many people die in suspicious circumstances, and yet you're supposed to believe that it wasn't a big deal at all? Do you ever notice the number of people that have died around, or been murdered around the Clintons? Hat tip to Rush here, um, <clears throat> literal hat tip, no less. He did a show once, and he goes, can I ask you all a question? He didn't say why he was asking. How many people do you know that have been murdered? Okay, and uh, my number has gone up a few since he's asked the question. I've worked in nightclubs, and uh, it's, not, it's not common that you have things popping off at a nightclub. But if you work at a place long enough, then you meet hundreds of people that are sometimes involved in less than admirable endeavors. We'll put it that way. And I, I've known a couple of people. One girl was beaten up by her thug boyfriend with a hammer. That kind of thing. Um, but by and large, not too many. The number of people that have been murdered around the Clintons is astronomical. Now keep in mind, 
they're not working in a nightclub. They're working in a place, I guess, far more corrupt, uh, Washington. So I shouldn't be surprised. But this is this is proof that Trump is once again sort of doing the right thing here with looking into the vaccines. There must be something there if we're now killing people over this. A prominent <clears throat> excuse me, autism researcher and vaccine proponent was found dead floating in the North Carolina River last week under what many are calling suspicious circumstances. The fisherman found a fisherman found the body of Dr. James Jeffrey Bradstreet in Rocky Broad River in Chimney Rock, North Carolina last Friday afternoon. Broad Street had a gunshot wound to the chest, which appeared to be self-inflicted, according to deputies, reported WHNS. Now, it could be it could very well be a suicide. We do we question here at the correct views. We do not jump to corral what we call the, the incorrect assumptions. But most people leave a note when they don't leave a note of any kind. It's a little unusual. And you'll say, Sam, have you ever been extremely depressed? I went through a bout where I allowed, when I was uh, much, much younger, a breakup to do things to me with uh, mentally that I've never, ever allowed to happen again. Um, yes, I, I've, I think everybody has had moments in their lives when uh, things that they've debated doing have gone too far. But you never not leave a note. Uh, if you really want to bother yourself, look up the movie The Bridge. It's a documentary about people that commit suicide off of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge in uh, San Francisco. Like a 150-foot drop or something into the water. It's like hitting, you know, might as well hit concrete at that point. Almost universally, notes were left. And I mean, and that's like the most depressing documentary in the world. So uh, this guy who has done great things with his life and I know who knows maybe maybe he went cuckoo over or something but it, it's fishy to not use a poor analogy at a poor time in a press conference the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office announced that divers from the Henderson County Rescue Squad responded to the scene and recovered a handgun from the river an investigation into the death is ongoing and the results of an autopsy are reportedly forthcoming. Well, an autopsy is not going to help. Well, I, I, it could, the way forensics is today. Obviously, he shot himself, but I know what they mean. They're going to go ahead and look for uh, look for other signs that it could be foul play in certain aspects of where if he was to scratch somebody or uh, strange DNA in places where it shouldn't be, signs that his hair was pulled, choked, that kind of thing. Dr. Bradstreet ran a private practice in Buford, Georgia, which focused on treating children with autism, spectrum disorder, PPD, and related neurological and developmental disorders. Among various remedies, Dr. Bradstreet's Wellness Center reportedly carried out mercury toxicity treatments. And uh, he believed that the heavy metal to be a leading factor in the development of childhood autism. So basically, one of the heroes of the field here <clears throat> who has done uh, great and wonderful things by alerting enough people that we now have the most powerful leader of the free world looking at the problem. He's a hero, friends. This, this guy needs to be remembered forever. And if they solve this problem, and you see autism rates go down, the number of good, the amount, we're talking about Hitler, the, the, the opposite, the amount of people that this man will have saved and have bettered their life within a small number of years will be hundreds, if not thousands of times greater than the number of people that evil men like Hitler have destroyed. So there's some good news. One person can do absolutely amazing things with just one idea. In addition to... Uh, Treating patients, Brett Street offer offered expert testimony in federal court on behalf of vaccine-injured families and was the founder and president of the International Child Development Research Center, which one time employed as much as scorned autism expert Dr. Andrew Wakefield as research director. Autism taught me more about medicine than medical school did, he said. The circumstances surrounding Brad Street's death are made all the more curious by the recent multi-agency raid 
by the FDA and his offices. The FDA has yet to reveal why agents searched the office of the doctor, reportedly a former pastor who had been controversial for well over a decade. So there is a chance that they found something in his PO box of which he was less than impressed with. Um, I'm not going to guess what it could be because different things come to mind and I'm not going to slander a dead man that might have saved the lives of many people by tossing something out there. But I will say that that is common. They'll find inappropriate pictures or inappropriate uh, maybe journal writings. Always a terrible idea, by the way. Um, in these block boxes and then people will off themselves. Social media pages dedicated to Brad Street's memory are filled with comments where, of course, your family's been there, of course. Um, there's a GoFundMe page. It's been set up by one of Brad Street's family members seeking to find the answers to the many questions leading up to his death. I would very much like to promote that. As a matter of fact, I am going to give you a 99% promise that I'll donate something small and believe me small to that if I remember when I get off air. Uh, that would be a very good idea. Uh, co comment, commentators are saying he did not kill himself, he was murdered. <clears throat> we don't know anything yet. But he said, uh, why would a doctor who had access to pharmaceuticals and could peacefully die peacefully shoot himself in the chest and throw himself into a river? And that's, you know what? That's an insightful comment. That's why comment lines do matter. He could have had a nice, peaceful death. He had a miserable death. All right, guys, I'm not going to stay on this, but sex sells. I'm just kidding. Independent.co.uk. Two animals from totally different species found having sex by scientists. This was sort of a non-story to me. That's why I'm mentioning it. You're going to say, what? There's a monkey having sex with a deer. They're trying to say, look, this happens in nature. So why is it weird that, you know, it could happen to adults? Are they pushing bestiality? After the way that they have pushed a number of sexual impure acts, possibly, am I being judgmental? No. I have a porn search history that will prove it. But what I, I, I'm not preaching to you. I'm just saying that unless somebody is looking for certain things, it's not normally a delightful idea to go ahead. I don't think that my porn history should be something that is encouraged for other people to look up because some people are greatly harmed by things that other people are not greatly harmed by. If Christelle and I, or just I, not that I'd ever do that, uh, watch porn, or if she watches porn by herself, um, we... It's just, it's something that her and I have always found in an adult way fun without giving too much personal information away. Many people feel the same way. Other people will watch the same porn video and go out and rape somebody. There are some things that should not be pushed, even though they should be legal. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. And the reason this is a non-story is because cats and dogs have been known to have sex for years. Ask anybody that's owned them both. This is not that unusual at all. They just want to push the, it happens in nature, so it must be okay, doctrine at you and shove it down your throat by making it look like this is some great story. Scientists may have caught two animals from completely different species having consensual sex for the first time. The new paper entitled Interspecies Sexual Behavior Between a Male Japanese Mac, 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 Mackie, and a female Sika deer, deer describes what is thought to be one of the first ever recorded instances of reproductive interference between two different animals. No, it's not! Zoos have seen this when animals have escaped. Monkeys are notorious for this. Fail videos show them attempting to mount every kind of animal known to man. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You can look it up at the Independent. It says most other examples constitute a kind of sexual harassment, but that the animal allowed it to happen, so it was consensual, so it was natural. Absolutely not the case at all. It's Macca monkey. I pronounced it wrong. Um, absolutely not true. 
cats and dogs have allowed it to happen for years. So they're pushing an agenda is on you. That's my point. They're pushing an agenda upon you. Guys, we got two stories left. They're brought to you by none other than D. Alan Ross. As you can see right there, the writer of The Day the Lights Went Out. A very, very funny story that you're going to want to read, and I encourage you to go and look it up. Friends, crazy but true, Flight 666 lands in hell on Friday the 13th. This is, uh, I'm going to spend about two minutes on this, but it's just funny. Imagine getting on board. See, I wouldn't have a problem for this because there is a, every, every guy remembers the first time that something significant happens in his life. Yes, I'm talking about sex. In my case, it was with my own species, just to be clear. Um, it happened on Friday the 13th. I have won scratch-off lottery tickets, of which I almost never play. I just bought it to prove a point. Won on Friday the 13th. Most shifts that I have worked, if it involves earning money that's not like a salary or it's a regular hourly job, has always been amazing on Friday the 13th. So this, for me, would have dampened it. I would have been like, man, I don't want to get on flight 666 on Friday the 13th. That will ruin everything. But um, <laughs> it would have been fun, I guess, in a way to have kept the boarding pass for that one. In a bizarre Friday the 13th coincidence, a flight bearing the number of the beast went straight to hell today. That's right. Finnair Flight 666 from Copenhagen flew directly to Helsinki, H-E-L, on Friday. Even better, the flight took off at 1300 local time, according to FlightAware. The one hour, 34 minute flight landed. Oh, listen to this. I just figured this out myself. This is why you watch the correct views. One hour and 34 minutes. 60 is one, 60 minutes in one hour. 34, 30, 60, 70, 80, 94, 94. What's nine plus four? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, landed out of hell at 3.41 p.m. Helsinki time. And it gets wackier. Well, I figured that one out. I don't know if they do it later in the article. The Twitter account, which tracks air traffic around the world, even pointed out that aircraft is 13 years old, according to its registration and serial number. It may be less of a coincidence and more of a brilliant move by someone who needs a raise in female scheduling department. Either way, it's fascinating. Well, it says next on the agenda, dig through the list of ticketed passengers to find out if anyone J named Jason was on flight 666 from Friday the 13th. Now keep in mind, at the time given, it was a one hour and 34 minute flight, 94, 9 plus 4 is 13. Figured that out. And that wasn't in the article. That's because I'm not an idiot. All right, maybe I am, but I am not the dummy of the day. You are an idiot. Who is the idiot? Well, no surprise here. He's not going to get the dunce cap of the month for this like a lot of people would think because I, he's said this before, but he said it again. And this time I, I managed to get it to him on uh, the end of the day here. Obama says the race relations have gotten better. Claim completely contradicted by what Americans say in the polls. President Barack Obama responded to the video of a mentally disabled white man being tortured and racially abused by four black kidnappers by claiming that race relations in America have gotten better. Meanwhile, when Trayvon Martin, who took a man, attacked him and beat his head into the ground... Happened. Obama said, Trayvon could have been my son if I'd have had a son. Well, how about this poor disabled guy? He couldn't have been your son, right? Because he voted for Trump, I guess. Um, race relations have gotten better. How have they gotten better? We have an idiot culture that has said that white people need to be listening to four chord music with no depth whatsoever and black people should be listening to music 
that doesn't even have anybody making any of the music. And I like techno too, that's not my point. Um, talking about how cool it is for them to harm one another. You then shake up the dumbed down white race. You shake up the black race that has been taught about how cool it is to shoot each other. You set them loose in the streets with no religion in school anymore. You send them, and then it was like that in my generation too. I'm not that old. Uh, no, no, no religion in our schools at all. No, no absolute. This is right. This is wrong. And again, I'm not a prude. I just admitted to watching porn. Um, you set these people loose. Watch them kill each other over the, how much pigment is in their skin, and then go on to tell us how wonderful race relations are going. I don't think it's accurate to say that race relations are getting worse, Obama told ABC News. Jay Levine, I promise you, for the most part, race relations have gotten better. Better? It used to be that comedians like Red Fox could make white jokes and white people would laugh. It used to be that comedians uh, like uh, Sam Kinison could make black jokes and people would laugh. Now? Everybody's so uptight that nobody laughs about anything anymore. The president went on to assert that racial tensions only appear to be getting worse on smartphones and on the internet. Well, in that instance, he could be right, because it's being hyped. But Obama's complaint is completely contradicted by the views of the American people and poll after poll after poll. Look, they, we know clearly that they want us divided. There, there's no... There is no chance of this being an accident. This is something that's been pushed and promoted for quite a long time. We're either going to wake up from it or we're not, guys. And that's the dumb of the day. That is also the correct views. Thank you for listening, friends. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me, I put towards a better show. That's what I want to do. You give your money to the government, they'll send your kid off to war. You give the money to George Soros, and he'll tell uh, tell you he's funding it. Black Lives Matter, so we can all kill each other. If you give it to me, it goes towards a better show, better equipment, of which that camera needs it. Uh, good night, friends, and God bless. And this whole computer could, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening, and uh, please share the video, hit subscribe, all that good stuff.